There are so many incredibly talented creators out there who are sharing their craft with the rest of the world. But more recently, there has been a specific creator who has really stood out to me. His name is Eric Lentz, and he is sitting right around the 3,000 subscriber mark at the time of recording this video. Though I suspect he's gonna be a lot bigger here in the near future. Not only does he make some of the most immaculately detailed and concise videos about Final Cut Pro, but he also makes some of the very best tools for Final Cut Pro. So I reached out to Eric asking if he'd be willing to come onto the channel to share about some of these incredible tools that he's built so that we can all level up our edits as creators. So with all that being said, Eric, take it away. Dylan, thank you so much for having me on your channel. When color grading, you will eventually come to a point where you need to take care of your skin tones. To focus on the skin tones, grabbing a draw mask and isolating the skin tones has been the standard for years and you see it in pretty much every color grading tutorial. But let me ask you one question. How much time did you spend on drawing masks? Yeah, it's 2024, we don't do that anymore. Let's get rid of the draw mask. I made a free little plugin called Check Layer. You can just apply it on top of everything and whenever you need, enable the eyedropper mask. You can adjust its size and drag it around. If you pay attention to the scopes underneath, they will read out exactly what you sample. If you don't need it anymore, just disable it and move on to your next clip. Then sample whatever you need to isolate and you can work freely on your clip underneath. Let's go back to our first clip and I will disable the eyedropper mask. The check layer has many other functions as well, such as showing you only the luma or only the chroma component of your video. Before I specialized in color, I worked as a freelance photographer. Even though color grading in video requires a vastly different workflow than photo editing, I always wished some tools could bridge the gap between photography and videography for everyone who doesn't want to relearn everything from the ground up. When I started making plugins, this is exactly what I set out to do. Let's get rid of the check layer and move on to our next clip. If I apply basic controls, you can see that all the familiar sliders are there. You can adjust your white balance, your exposure, your contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the blacks. Next, for targeted color adjustments, you can use the HSL sliders just as you're used to. Maybe let's swing the red hues a little bit in this direction and the aqua hues a little bit in that direction. And let's get rid of some saturation in the background. Maybe even darken it a little bit. If you need that magic pop, why not apply the presence plugin and finish it off with a little bit of clarity? Yeah, something like this. Or if we have a look at the next shot and apply the presence plugin, maybe with a little bit of DAs. I cannot show you all of my plugins today, especially since there are so many and they have evolved so much over the years. But here are some of my favorites. We go to the next clip and start with proper lens correction. You can take care of barrel distortion, just get the scale up there, and vignette correction. Let me make this a little bit more obvious. You can always enable and customize a grid overlay to get everything just right. And I might want to take care of the amount just a little bit more. To spot any uncovered edges, you can show the edge warning. Now I can just adjust the scale and there we go. What always bothered me about plugins that emulate bloom or mist is that they would just hammer your highlights. Well, not anymore. We go to the next clip and apply the bloom and mist plugin. Then you go into mask mode, sample your highlights, roll them off just a tad and crank up the diffusion to get the look that you want. You can see to the left here and in the waveforms that our highlights just get hammered. To counter that, increase the highlight recovery until your highlights come back and to get rid of these dark edges, just increase the smooth roll off. And here we go, just like that. Next, I lower the projection to make everything a little bit more believable. Volumetric lighting has always been a pain in the bum because plugins that allow you to do that operate in 3D space. Therefore, they are pretty complex. This is without a doubt the physically right way to do it, but I don't want to get a degree in visual effects if I just want to spice up a shot. I go to the next clip and apply the volumetric lighting plugin. Again, I go into mask mode and select the light sources. Something like this. I will go out of the mask mode and zoom out. With the on-screen controls, I take care of the intensity, somewhere around here, and the position of the light. Then again, I lower the projection, and take care of the highlight recovery. To make everything even more believable, I think I will colorize the light. Let's try to match the sunlight out there. Something like this, and we might even reduce the projection a little bit more. Let's zoom back in and have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. If I play that clip, 
you can see that the light reacts dynamically. Halation. Halation occurs when light reflects inside the different layers of film stock, causing a red halo in contrasting areas. But there is more to that. To demonstrate what's going on, I go to this black and white image. I already configured the plugin, so we just need to crank up the diffusion. To make looking at a black and white gradient aesthetically pleasing, I also applied a little bit of grain. Let's zoom in a bit, and we go to this area. Depending on how much these internal reflections expose the green layer, the halo appears rather red or rather orange. You can take control over that with the green layer exposure slider. The last three plugins I showed you are brand new and in version 1.0. I already have a notepad full of ideas for improvements. Updates will roll out very soon, which brings me, quite frankly, to the best part of this video. I hate subscriptions just as much as you do. Therefore, all my plugins are one-time purchase with free updates for life. Thank you so much for having me, Dylan, and back to you. Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to come onto my channel. For everybody else, make sure you follow the links down below to check out everything that Eric talked about in this video and more importantly, make sure you go subscribe to his channel because it is absolutely going to blow up in the Final Cut space. Thank you so much for watching this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.